I wanted to chat about something that I've had a couple of people ask me about recently. And, um, and it's something that's always been a struggle as long as I've been teaching turnkey, teaching about turnkey websites and building turnkey websites. And that is the idea of how much control do you give the end user, the customer, the client over the website. So default WordPress is the, you know, the vanilla WordPress that if you don't do anything crazy to it, that's what you get. And that gives you access to, as a WordPress user, things like the customizer. So that's where you can go uh, view the front end of your website and make like theme changes and menu changes to your, your navigation menu. And they have a widgets section uh, that you can change your widgets and stuff like that. So you get a lot of control over your theme. You can do, you know, theme colors, font, stuff like that. Uh, you typically can do from the customizer. So the customizer gives you all of those kind of theme options that you can see from the front end as you're editing your site. Then of course we have on the back end the actual content editing where you know now we have Gutenberg or or if you're you know still holding on to that classic editor interface that's the classic editor and that stuff happens on the back end and that's kind of to me been the conflict and the frustration with WordPress is that there's some things you handle on the front end like the you know the theme stuff and the customizer but then there's some things that by default you handle on the back end and even though Gutenberg is quote unquote a page builder of sorts it's it's really not right it's still in the back end you're still seeing a representation of the page on the back end it's not truly a front end editing experience so with in both of those cases, you have to switch from the customizer to the back end. And even the customizer is kind of a alternate view of the front end. You're still viewing it through the lens of WP admin. It's 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 confusing. It can be confusing for users when you know they want to see, they want to add content and they want to change their website and they want to be able to do that. And that's the disconnect between something like WordPress and something like Squarespace or Wix or some of these other, you know, premium or not premium, but well-known, you know all-in-one solutions that are out there that we're kind of trying to compete with in a way is that those solutions have a, a truly completely front-end editing experience so you can edit everything about your website in one place so that sometimes that might be what you want to recreate in WordPress and uh, we'll, we'll talk about ways you can do that you also have widgets which are kind of strange when when you first try to introduce the concept of a widget to a user who's never used WordPress before because it's it's this kind of standalone box of content or function functionality that is only limited to certain sections like sidebars or footers, or, you know, if you're using Genesis, the whole homepage is, is, is a bunch of widgets. And then, so the user has to think, okay, where do I go if I want to edit this part of my website? Do I go to a widget? Do I go to a Gutenberg? Do I go to the customizer? And I'm personally not a fan of the interface for widgets in the customizer. So it, on my current WAS, I have users still edit their widgets in the, the dashboard widget area of WordPress, but then that gives them just a, another section they need to go to to edit content on their website. So then they, you know, have the customizer, the front end, the, the content, the widgets. And then finally, you know, finally we have the page builder and the page builders kind of solve a lot of this. And that's not technically default WordPress, but you basically just install an extra plugin and you get a page builder. Page builder fixes the disconnect between the content editing on the back end and the customizer on the front end, where the page builder allows the user to edit content on the front end as well. They still have to go back and forth between customizer and page builder interfaces, but at least they have a consistent experience where they're viewing the front end of their website to make, whether it's theme changes or content changes. But then, so, you know, some of the downsides of the page builder are that, so Melanie, we're talking today about um, the different ways that you can give your customers access to edit the content and the front end and, and just everything that's on, on the website and how, you know, and, and right now we're just going through the default WordPress experience, which can be very confusing and very disconnected for the average person who isn't used to using WordPress. When you look at that versus the experience that uh, they would have if they would use Squarespace or Wix or some of those other page building platforms, it's the WordPress experience is a little more confusing for the average user. So we were just going over all the kind of the default things that you can add to WordPress. WordPress 
without too much effort and how they're kind of confusing. And we were just getting to the page builder, which is, you know, something that helps at least give the customers a front end view to edit content that's similar to the customizer where they can go to edit other theme areas of the theme. So, you know, those are what you're given with WordPress and, and that's a very disconnected, confusing experience. And, you know, the promise is of Gutenberg is that it's going to be kind of the, the one-stop shop for all of this stuff eventually, right? That's going to be where you can, you know, manage widgets and manage your theme. You know, eventually the plan for Gutenberg is to have it take over the entire theme editing experience. How you feel about that? You know, <laughs> it's uh, there's pros and cons to that for sure. But uh, I think that's the future of WordPress. So let's talk about for us who are running a WAS and the options that we have for what we can do to make the, the experience a little bit better for our customers, a little bit easier. The easiest thing to do, of course, is give full access to everything. We can use things like the KeyPress UI Manager plugin to hide different menu items to kind of make that a little bit easier, but not necessarily lock down too much. This option is best for if you have a niche of customers who likes to tinker or who may already be familiar with WordPress. So if you have, you know, if your customers are bloggers or, you know, people who might have been running their own website on WordPress to begin with, they might already have a handle on WordPress and then it's, it's okay to give them full access to everything because they're already familiar with it. Also, you know, folks in my niche, for, for IT businesses, they tend to like to tinker and like to have access to all the tools. So I tend to give them, you know, more or less full access. Again, I edit the menus and simplify the menus and I give them onboarding videos and stuff like that to, to make things easier and to explain how to use things. But for the most part, they, they like to have access to everything and have control over everything. Not all niches are like that though. Some niches just want to get information on the website and be done with it. And so th those might be better for some of the other options we're gonna be talking about. If you do give them full access, um, then the, the onboarding videos piece is, is really important. You wanna make sure you're providing some sort of training or onboarding videos so that they understand how to use the interface because you don't wanna take for granted that all of your customers understand WordPress, even though some of them might, some of them might not. So you wanna make sure that you have that good training upfront for them. Quick question. Um, do you use like a pre-built thing like WP 101 or video user manuals or did you create your own? I created my own. Although in, in the course I do uh, teach about um, video user manuals and how you can use that to supplement your own training. The only problem I have with those is that I like to reskin, you know, my dashboard. And then when those training videos are showing a non-skinned version, just the default WordPress dashboard, and that's kind of a disconnect, right? If you know, mm -hmm. their dashboard looks like one thing and then the video dashboard looks like another thing. So that, that's definitely a possibility. And if you're not, you know, retheming the dashboard at all, then then using something like, the, you know, one of those video libraries I think is a good idea. That way you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You don't have to re, you know, re-record a bunch of stuff, but I would still encourage you to at least record one video where you talk about, where you welcome people, you talk about how they can best utilize the different options that you're giving them in WordPress for their specific niche. And then you could supplement it with things like user manuals and WP 101. All right. Another kind of basic option for the WAS is um, instead of giving them full access, which means, you know, for me, full access means giving them access to Beaver Builder, giving them access to the customizer, giving them access to the widget screen, the uh, the classic edit. For me, it's the classic editor, but for you, it could be Gutenberg. But if you're kind of all in on this Gutenberg thing, then they're going to start, you know, allowing you to edit more areas of the website using Gutenberg. So you can start out just limiting people to only use Gutenberg and you can, you know, take away access to the customizer, take away access to the page builder. You can still have a page builder there if you want to use it, but you'd basically just give them access kind of to the back end Gutenberg experience. The, the benefit of that is that this is the future of WordPress. So if you want to you just make sure that your platform is going to continue to be compatible with the core of the way WordPress wants you to edit WordPress, then, you know, hitching your, your cart to the Gutenberg train is going to be a good, good move to make your WAS future proof. You can get your customer used to the idea of blocks, which will eventually take over the entire theme control. So they're talking about, you know, having blocks for widgets and then using blocks to edit things like your, your header and your footer. So eventually themes will use the Gutenberg block concept to edit the entire website. So if you want to get a head up, head start on that, then giving your customers access to Gutenberg only is, is a good way to go. So, so those are kind of the basic options where you don't have to do much extra work. 
on top of what WordPress gives you by default. Um, but for me, neither of those options are, are exactly right for my customers. I want to give them kind of a hybrid. And, you know, I've been working on some other WASP projects where the customers, I don't want to give them any kind of editing access on the front end as far as being able to change, rearrange blocks and, and change the way things are formatted and stuff like that. So I want to give them a little bit more limited experience. So the more limited of an experience you want to give the customer, the more work it is on you to lock things down. Um, but let's talk about some, some options for that. So one option is to just give them access to the front end only and not even give them access to the back end of WordPress at all. There are some people who are doing that with their niche or with their WASs. To make it perfect, you're going to have to do some custom coding, but you can get like 90% there using off the shelf plugins. So with this, you can um, just limit your customers to use things like the customizer and the page builder. Actually, I forgot to also mention the WAS Hero plugins, which will allow you to add WP Ultimo widgets into Beaver Builder. So you can give your customers access to a front end settings page or something on their website where they can update their credit card information um, and manage all their subscriptions and stuff with, um, with WP Ultimo called WP Ultimo widgets. Yep, there we go. So for example, if you're using, so you can use washero.com and then their plugin WP Ultimo widgets for, and then they have one for Elementor and Beaver Builder, but I really strongly recommend you use Beaver Builder for especially the what I'm going to talk about here in a second. So you can use, so they can do everything they need to do on the front end, including edit or update their WP Ultimo settings. So to make this work, you want to use Beaver Builder. You want to use Wallace Inline, which um, allows you to lock down certain areas of the page builder, but still allow users to edit content on the front end. So you can use Wallace Inline if you don't, if you want to kind of lock down your customer's ability to screw up a lot of the interface on the front end. And then another plugin that, I, that I've just been introduced to is called Assistant. It's made by the Beaver Builder crew and it allows users to do, cause this was the missing piece for me where I couldn't give my customers complete access to the front end was because they couldn't create new pages and they couldn't edit things about their page like permalink or schedule a post to be scheduled in the future, stuff like that that you can only do on the back end. Well, Assistant allows you to do that stuff on the front end. So it allows users to create pages and edit meta information for pages and posts and custom post types and all that stuff on the front end. So with these plugins, you're able to, like I said, get like 90% of the way there for front end only access. And then you could totally just block off access or just not give them access to the WordPress dashboard at all, or have the dashboard be a very limited experience of, you know, maybe they can go there to edit their password information and, you know, maybe change some of the site settings and then, you know, use UI manager to kind of lock out everything else. Is that assist assistant by Beaver Builder? Yes. And okay. it's a free plugin that you can find on the WordPress repository. And in a sec, I'll show you, you know, what it looks like and, and how it works and stuff. So there, you know, there are options to getting you close to having front end only access. And then there's another option to just give them access to the back end, which is means that and this is what we're doing currently with a project we're working on where the customer only has access to like basically a form on the back end and they fill out the form with some information and that information gets populated on the front end, but they have no control over changing anything on the front end as far as color or content or fonts, you know, that's locked in because, you know, this, this specific project we're working on, it's the websites are branded. So the website and, and it's kind of like franchise kind of model. So they want the front end to always look the same and they don't want the users to be able to change the front end, but they have just specific info to, to enter on the back end. And then, uh, and then it gets populated on the front end. So to do this, we're using ACF or advanced custom fields plugin. And then we're using the ability for the advanced custom fields pro plugin to create an options page in the back end of WordPress. So you can create ACF fields to be used because typically an ACF fields are attached to posts and pages, but this allows you to create fields that are, are standalone just on their own dashboard screen. And that's where you can gather information like, you know, business name, you know, social media links, business address, business phone number, stuff that you want to populate on the front end and, you know, not give them access to the front end. So you'll, you'll create fields fields like you normally would in, in ACF. And then you would assign those fields to the options page. And I'm going to show you how to do all this in a sec. And then you use a short code that, you know, comes built in with ACF. 
which can display any ACF field on the front end of your website. So you would just use the post ID, which for our, in our case would be the options page is the post ID and then the field, whatever the name of the field is. And then that's your short code and you can place that anywhere on the front end and it'll populate that information on the front end. So that's a pretty simple way to, you know, give your users access to be able to edit content on the front end, but not give them access to edit layout or colors or any, any other things on the front end. You know, you can kind of do a hybrid with some of these. You can do the back end only with ACF, but then also give them access to the customizer. So that way, if you do want to give them access to change colors or other things, but you can limit it, right? With, with the UI manager, with the Keypress UI manager plugin, you can remove some of the uh, things like maybe widgets or, or things that you might not want to give your customers access to mess with in the customizer. You can remove those menu items from the customizer and only give them access to maybe just change colors and font and, and a couple other basic things in the customizer. That's the only thing they do on the front end. Everything else they do on the back end. So, so there's, so there's some different philosophies there. You can try to do as much as possible on the front end or as much as possible on the back end. And luckily there's, you know, we've got some tools to help us, you know, move in either direction more easily. So let me give you a bit of a demo of both of these. Hi, Matthew Rodella here, co-founder of Keypress Media. And I just wanted to let you know that this is an excerpt uh, from a full length webinar that we did in the Keymasters Club. And the Keymasters Club is a monthly membership where we help support you as you grow and build your websites as a service or WAS platform. So if you're interested, if you're running a WAS or you're thinking about running a WAS and you want uh, to have ongoing support, we have a great community. We have lots of webinars just like this one and community meetings. Then I'd love to see you inside the Keymasters Club. The link to join is down below. Otherwise, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to get future helpful videos like this one. Thanks, guys.